All right, so here's the vibrating point regulator, and this is the A-type. Everything in the box is included in the regulator. And then down on the bottom, we have our actual generator. Everything in the red circle is inside the generator. So you see the armature and the field winding. Of course, A plus coming out the top, and that's going to go to both our regulator and to the field. On the lower left, we have the battery and or the bus. So the bus is kind of in the middle there between the B tab and the battery because obviously our generator is going to be powering our bus and charging our battery. First component on the far left is the RCCR. What does that stand for? Reverse current cutoff relay. Very good. Reverse current cutoff relay. And it includes those two coils. So we have current coming out of the generator through that middle coil. We'll talk about that in a bit. And then it comes to this connection, and that is a solder joint connection. From there, it goes up through the voltage <laughs> sensing coil to ground. And what is that circuit called? That is the RCCR. Well, there's not a specific name for that whole circuit. We're just looking at how the RCCR points work. Those points are spring-loaded open, so the spring is pulling that arm up. And so once we have current going through the top coil, it will create a magnetic field. What will that do to the points? Yep, it will pull them down and connect them. That will allow current to come from that solder connection through the points and to charge the bus and the battery. And there's a picture of the bus there, the rectangle. Uh, that coil at the bottom, it's a thicker winding because it has to carry all of that current that's going out to the bus and to the battery. And that will also create a magnetic flux field that will help pull the points closed. So is that like Yep. Depends on the size of the generator, 40, 30, 40, 50, 60. What kind of amps are you looking at in the Satabria? Anybody? Skyhawks are 60. Skyhawks are 60. Okay. Next, let's look at what would happen if the generator is putting out a low voltage, for example, at idle RPM. And then that would mean that the battery has a higher voltage than the generator. And so current would try and go backwards from the battery through that coil and would try and drain back to ground <coughs> through the generator. But that would drain the battery. We don't want that to happen. So if the current's going backwards through that bottom coil, the north and south flip, and it will now allow that spring to open the points. Because it's not pulling the points down, it'll open it and therefore there will be no current flowing back from the battery to ground through the generator. Any questions on that system? Those points are polarized? They're not actually polarized. It's, it's weird. Well, initially, when everything is going the right direction, it's helping. The two coils are working together to pull them closed. But when the current goes back the opposite way, now that uh, the flux field flips north and south, so it's like it's canceling out the field of the top coil. So there's not enough pull on those points to keep them closed. Okay, let's move to the center one, the current limiter contacts. These points are spring-loaded closed. Spring is pulling them up to be normally closed. Of course, we have current going two ways. So this is our field circuit, right? The current comes out, goes through the field, goes through the points to ground. And so, remember, this is an A-type, so that makes sense seeking a ground at the regulator. 
There are lines of magnetic flux going across the armature. And so if the current through the field increases, the uh, lines of magnetic flux increase, and that will increase the output of the generator. That's just important as we look at how these points work. So we'll initially have current going up through this coil. If something happens and there's an overcurrent situation and the current's <laughs> really high, it's going to create enough of a magnetic flux field to pull the points open. And the reason we want to be careful of too high of current is because it can melt that solder connection where the circle is there. If the current gets too high, now we have that magnetic flux. It's going to pull the points open. This is just to give you a, cl a clear vision of what's happening. So that field circuit was going to ground, but now it can't anymore. That will decrease the current going through the field, will decrease the number of lines of flux, and will decrease the output. So output will go down. Any questions on that? Starting to make sense? That solder melts, is that regulator trash? Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Okay, last one, voltage regulator points. Again, we have the field current finding ground through the points. Our current is going to go through the RCCR. It will also go back through the voltage regulator coil. If the voltage gets too high, it will create a magnetic field. Of course, those points are spring-loaded closed. Once that magnetic field is created, it will pull the points open. And so the field current can't get to ground through that circuit, and it will be forced to go through the resistor to ground. If the field current has to go through the resistor, will this increase or decrease the resistance? Will it increase or decrease the current? The current goes down, the output of the generator goes down. Good. So the current motor coil and the voltage regulator coil are in series? They're in parallel. Oh, wait. Yeah, kind of series. After the current limiter coil, it branches off in parallel. Almost done. So then I used a thinner yellow line to show that now the voltage output has decreased. When it decreases, the magnetic field isn't as strong. And so it lets those points close again. When the points close, now the current can go back up through the points directly to ground without going through the resistor. <clears throat> and that will let the voltage stabilize. <coughs> so those vibrating points at the top control the output of the generator. Right there. Any questions on that? The point of R2 is to kind of absorb some of the voltage fluctuations as fields are expanding and collapsing. It's almost like a capacitor would be used later, but this was before capacitors. All right, that's it for that one.